Hey, what's up guys? So this video is not gonna be like a review. Um, it's more like a little uh, discussion or more like a little audio. So you can probably uh, minimize this video and not look at my face throughout the entire video. Uh, but I guess it's really important that maybe, especially for some of you guys who are probably about a bit a bit newer in this whole PC building scene and this whole PC master race scene, I guess uh, it's really, it, perhaps it could be important for you guys um, to consider. Um, you know, ever since this whole PC Master Race thing has been really, really booming, what I really observe is um, every single quarter, a brand new hardware is being released, regardless of case, uh, peripherals, or even processors. Well, processors don't get released that quickly, but it, it gets released annually. And you get motherboards, you get a graphic card, you get a whole lot of other stuff that being released that puts um, new users into a huge dilemma. It puts you into this whole... Um, uh, situation where do you think you should upgrade every single time? Now the rule of thumb that I always uh, put into consideration is like myself, I, I use an, an X99 6850K and just because it's an X299, uh, I don't exactly want to upgrade it because uh, I don't feel a need for it. And speaking about need is something that uh, you need to ask yourself as well, saying that do you actually need to upgrade what's really wrong with your PC? And what I did was uh, in continuation to um, the whole status update that I did on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, I just thought I should further discuss it. And I guess I sort of broke it down to a couple of points. Um, and first and foremost is storage. Um, most people tend to overlook this part. They want to upgrade every single thing, but they forget that they, the essential part is your storage or your, uh, your load drive or your OS drive. And um, for myself, uh, I use an SSD for boot and I, most people uh, use an SSD today, but some of you still don't. And that's the rule number one that you need to check. Uh, that's just a personal opinion. Uh, is your SSD intact or do you even have an SSD per se? Are you still loading your OS with a mechanical drive? Uh, there are obviously um, hybrid drives, which is like a combination of an SSD plus a mechanical drive. Not as quick as an SSD, but uh, it's something that you may want to consider. It's still better than a mechanical drive, like a normal mechanical drive, but obviously it's really good to get an SSD. Even a 120 gig would suffice. A brand new one will cost you about 200 ringgit. And that's like, in my opinion, the first thing that you need to fix if you are facing some sluggish issues or performance issues issues and of course there are a couple of things that you need to consider as well uh, once you fix that part. Now the second thing I guess it's the most popular thing, graphics. Uh, a brand new graphics card get re gets released and um, you have the 1070 Ti um, which was recently released, you have the Titan XP, you have the 1080 Ti, um, you even have the 1080, 1070 and stuff and you're using a, a 960 or a 970. The bigger question is, do you really, really need to upgrade? Now, for, for some casual gamers who, or who tend to play a wide spectrum of games, uh, including current AAA games, the, it actually may be quite demanding compared to uh, games that are slightly older. Now, if you're a competitive player and you play like maybe Dota or CSGO or Overwatch, chances are you don't actually need a 1080 tie or even a 1080. In my opinion, what I've observed is that even a 1060 or a 1070 would suffice. I do still see some competitive players playing on a 980 Ti or even a 970. And it really boils down to another sub part uh, of graphics, which is monitor. Uh, the, the first and foremost, when it comes to competitive gaming, most of us game on 144Hz monitor. It has a higher refresh rate, which means you get higher frames per second and stuff. Um, on 1080p, it's the most popular resolution. Not everyone games on a 1440p monitor, and obviously not a very handful of people game on 4K because of its demanding uh, requirements. So the thing is, you need to also check if your monitor supports 144Hz. If your monitor is a 60Hz monitor and you have like a 1080 tie and you're running on, on a 1080p resolution, chances are you're pretty much wasting your, your money. I'm not saying you should sell your 1080 tie and get a lower GPU. I'm saying is that, that is also something you need to consider because in my opinion, changing your graphic card and your monitor sort of comes hand in hand. I'm not too sure how related they are when it comes to um, every single one of you. But to me, if I want to upgrade my graphic card, I will make sure that my monitor is also able to push the graphics card limit or else I'm just really uh, not putting it to full use. So I guess that's something you need to consider as well. Graphic card, is your graphic card uh, good enough for the monitor? Is your monitor good enough for your graphic card? So if you're still using a 1080p monitor at 60 hertz, chances are a 1050 Ti would definitely suffice. If you're using a 144 hertz monitor um, at 1080p, even a 1060 would definitely suffice on competitive gaming. But if you're going for AAA games, uh, you gotta brace yourself for the cost. You gotta upgrade your, your graphics card to a 
I would say a triple A graphic card, like maybe a 1070, 1080. A 1060 is okay, a 1050 Ti, I'm not too sure if you can play on higher settings. Uh, that's something uh, up for debate, of course, leave your comments uh, in the comment section below. And of course, the monitors do come at a pretty hectic cost, especially for those with higher refresh rates. So processors is another one that comes hand in hand with a motherboard. Uh, I, like I said, I still use a 6850K processor on the um, 2011 uh, on an X99 board and I don't see a need for me to move to an X299 board or even a Threadripper or even a Ryzen despite the fact that these processors have more cores and um, perhaps higher overclocking capabilities and multitasking and stuff because uh, there are other factors that uh, I always consider and I guess that's another topic of discussion. But, but for most users, uh, I what I notice is that when a new processor comes out, the common question that tends to pop out is obviously, should I change my processor? Now, uh, the simplest way for you to do is to check your task manager. Uh, when you check your task manager, you're gonna look at your CPU usage against your usual applications, your day-to-day -day activity. I'm not asking to run a stress test. I'm asking you to run apps that you use or programs or games that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. A good example is Rainbow Six Siege. Now, uh, I've been playing the game for quite a while, a bunch of with a couple of guys, and what I realized is that Siege is it's a it's a much more CPU demanding game compared to uh, other games, which is more GPU demanding. So something to consider as well, you don't have to necessarily upgrade your 6700K 1151 uh, processor to a Ryzen just because, because in the end you might not fix the underlying problem, which could be your storage, which could be, which could be your GPU, which is bottlenecking. There are tons of couple, there are tons of sites, sorry. There are tons of sites out there which is able to measure or, or indicate if your current hardware is bottlenecking. So yeah, that's something to consider as well, guys, processes. RAM, me memory, RAM, RAM, memory. It's something of debate for a really, really long time, I guess. Some say that 16 gigabyte is the bare minimum that you should have in today's PC master race or rig. Uh, some say 32 gig and for an X99 board, you may get up to 128 gig. Um, but the bigger question is, do you really need that much RAM? Again, it boils down to uh, what you're using it for. Uh, for. For those who edit videos, perhaps more RAM would be good. For those who game, 16 gig is sufficient. Do not overkill on your RAMs. RAMs, so they are not cheap, given the whole supply demand thing, very similar GPUs. So just watch your spending there. Um, I'm not really a fan of getting super high frequency memories, um, especially for um, all this old XMP stuff. If you're a general user, a uh, 2666 megahertz RAM would definitely suffice. A 2333 would suffice as well, a DDR4. You don't necessarily have to get an RGB RAM unless you have extra cash to splurge on. Again, RAM prices are off the roof, similar to GPUs. So make a wiser decision. Do not overkill on your RAM, spend it on something else like storage. Cooling is something that I really like to talk about because it has been a, a topic of debate uh, for a really, really long time. Uh, simply because uh, I started off from an all-in-one cooler. I'm just gonna grab a sample of an all-in-one cooler box. Um, this is the H115i Pro, and it's a 280 mil uh, radiator cooler AIO from Corsair. It's a new one, and AIOs today have sort of, sort of become the uh, norm for uh, novice users because firstly they're sort of liquid cooled um, and you don't get the whole uh, mess of having a huge Noctua air cooler on your CPU. But I guess as well uh, most people tend to also slowly creep up into the whole water cooling scene and water cooling is something that um, I enjoy doing. I enjoy the learning curve but there are certain drawbacks of water cooling but before I get into water cooling now um, cooling is something that there are many factors for cooling number one it's not just your cooler it's not just your AIO it's your circulation in your case uh, positive negative pressure do you have too many exhausts do you have uh, uh, static pressure fans or airflow fans is your case well ventilated is your case too cluttered do you have too much stuff in your case is your case too small uh, these are the things that uh, you should consider are you using a stock fan on your product processor, most users use a stock fan in their processor, but they tend to upgrade to an all-in-one cooler and they sort of not find much of a cooling difference. And I guess um, this is the re there are a couple of reasons why. Uh, number one is like I said again, it's airflow and of course thermal paste. Um, thermal paste again, uh, it's really not something uh, 
that plays a major role in cooling as much as people say it does. But I guess given the entire uh, topic of all-in-one coolers, uh, there's only so much an all-in-one cooler could actually do for your PC. But if you decide to jump into water cooling, uh, the, the first thing that you need to consider is maintenance, cost. Um, I do know there are brands like Bisky, Barrow, um, and some other OEM brands that offer cheaper solutions. But guys, please remember that anything that's cheap doesn't come uh, hand in hand with quality. And I'm, I'm not bashing Barrow, I'm not bashing Bisky and stuff, but I've used their fitting a couple of times. I've used Barrow's radiator once and it leaked. Um, I didn't puncture the radiator, but it just somehow leaked. Now, um, there are a lot of components when it comes to water cooling. You have your uh, little tube here, which is the soft tube, which is Duraclear. And of course, there, there, is, there are hot tubes, there are soft tubing, and there are so many components of water cooling. You even have your pump here. Uh, this is something that I took off my old PC and I changed it to uh, a, a new pump. Uh, but there's a pump and, and water cooling, great quality water cooling stuff lasts you longer and it saves your PC from being damaged. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy Bisky or Barrow if you want to jump into water cooling. I'm saying that if you're going to jump into Bisky or those little cheaper uh, water cooling solutions, you might as well just stick to your current AIO because that's much safer. And in my personal opinion, just running a single loop directly to your CPU doesn't actually have much difference compared to an AIO. Uh, this is something that I've done multiple tests many times. I, I'm not sure why. It could be uh, some whole. It it could be some ventilation issues. It could be some thermal paste issues and stuff. But I really don't see much of a difference when it comes to AIO versus uh, water cooling, custom water cooling on a CPU only. But when it comes to GPU, there is a massive difference. So if you're going for a water cooling or custom loop, I'd suggest go for a full custom loop. Do not go for just a CPU. Sir not worth it uh, but again you know guys uh, feel free to share your comments uh, in the comments section it's just more like a personal uh, preference kind of thing i i prefer to go full on rather than just go for cpu i did that once you can check out my video it wasn't really that great i think there could be an issue with my older processor but i guess in summary what i realized is that uh, currently when i run a full water cooling loop i get like 51 degrees on 100 percent load on my overclocked uh, 6850k and that's great compared, that's like 20 degrees cooler compared to uh, an AIO. Um, even for GPU, it idles on 2930. It's max temperature at 100% loads about 45. So that's massive compared to uh, a 35 degree add-on if you were to use fans on your GPU. So that's something you want to consider, but uh, you got to do maintenance as well on your custom water cool setup. And, and that's something that most people tend to not uh, factor in as well, cost is an issue, uh, maintenance. If you don't enjoy doing water cooling, you may end up just cringing at every, every single time you wanna do maintenance because you gotta get someone to do it for you. If you really wanna start, there are tons of EKWB kits with the P240, the S240, um, the Extreme Series, you can start off from there. Avoid cheap stuff, avoid, uh, man, I'm not gonna mention brands, but just avoid them because you have so expensive hardware in there and uh, you don't want to risk just ruining everything because of a single leak. So speaking about leak, you got to do leak tests as well when you uh, run a custom loop. So yeah, guys, that's a lot of work right there. If you don't enjoy water cooling, please do not believe those who say water cooling is cheap. It's never cheap. Uh, yeah, man, it's never ever cheap compared to an AIO solution. So if you do not have the amount of time, the amount of interest or passion in custom water cooling, stay away from it. So the final piece of hardware that we tend to overlook uh, compared to all the other stuff like GPUs, motherboards, and processors are power supply units. I'm a big fan of getting higher quality power supply units, even though it's gonna just blow a hole in your pocket. You gotta skimp on other stuff. If you gotta skimp on a cheaper case, it's perfectly fine. But do not ever skimp on your power supply units. Do not ever get power supply units that have zero rating. I've seen power supply units that have like, they don't even have bronze rating. Uh, not even silver, of course. So they don't even have bronze rating and, and that's really risky. Yeah, they do come with one year warranty. I'm not gonna mention brands, but please do not go for those kind of power supply units. Try to go for power supply units that are at least silver or gold if you can afford it. If you can afford platinum, please go for platinum and try to get a bigger capacity. Now, I'm not a power supply guru, but what I understand is, uh, logically speaking, if your power supply unit is running at 100% load, 
Um, well, it doesn't, but it runs, not runs at 90%. If it runs at full load and you're running at about 500 watts or 550, you're better off getting a, a 850 watt power supply unit that runs at maybe 60% load. That way, in my opinion, you don't stress your power supply unit too much, you don't push it to the max too much, hence increasing the longevity of your power supply unit. And higher end power supply units tend to come with like 10 years warranty and I know Corsair does that and I know EVGA does that I know uh, I know FSP's higher end does that as well they have higher warranties that they come with better capacitors and stuff and I do know um, Superflower does that as well Superflower's power supply unit is pretty decent Corsair is great of course uh, EVGA too but my final advice is to get a really higher not really higher it's really to get a higher quality power supply unit and, and that's really essential because without a good quality power supply unit then the amount of I don't know current or the amount of um, electricity that goes through your board may or may not be efficient you know you you risk a chance of blowing up your power supply units and I've heard that so many times and um, and and you tend to screw up your GPU your motherboard and probably your entire PC Anyway guys, that's all I have for this little short video. Thanks for listening guys. And my final advice for anyone who wants to build a custom PC or a custom water cooling loop or anything related to PC, do not fall into the whole master race trap. Do not overspend on stuff. Uh, if you do have the money, good for you guys. But if you're really on a budget, buy what you need, buy the important stuff. If you have extra budget, spend on something that gives you longevity. Do not spend on something that gives you that short-term thrill like spending extra 300 bucks on RGB that's just gonna get you nowhere RGB doesn't help it gives you nothing but colors thanks for watching guys I'll see you in my next one bye bye